I'm explaining the whole thing. First, uh, first what? example that we'll want to do for Michelle is obviously, guys, if we look at this, oh, and Madison, if we're doing this problem, we got to make sure, guys, we're in standard form, right? So the main important thing for standard form that we looked at is we wanted to make sure it's equal to 1. So my first step in this example is to divide by 9. Therefore, I obtain x minus 2 squared over 9. 9 divided by 9 is going to be 1. Okay. Now, if I don't have a denominator, can I just use a denominator? Should I use 0? I need to use 1, right? And I wrote 0. Um, yes, don't want to put a 0 there, because obviously dividing by 0 would be undefined, and that's not going to make sense. For them. But you can divide it by 1, and that'd be perfectly fine. Um, so now, let's go ahead and identify our center, because that should be the easiest, right? Our center is always going to be h and k. So 2, negative 1. Did I do the center last time? Yeah, I did the center. Did zero, zero. Oh, it was 0, 0. That was easy. OK. Um, so the center is 2, comma, negative 1. Now what we need to do is identify our a and our b. And our a is not always larger than our b, but in this example, that ends up working because it's a squared minus b squared, right? So we're good in this case. Hey, has anybody seen the bottom half? So would b be 0.5? What? So a squared is 9, and b squared is equal to 1. So now we need to identify our a and our b. So a is going to be equal to 3. b is going to equal to 1. Because what number multiplied by itself gives you 1, which is 1. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So therefore, we're going to have 9 plus 1 equals c squared. So 10 equals c squared, or c equals the square root of 10. Okay, So now we have identified our h and our k and our a, b, and c. right? And it's basically the same process, guys, just given different equations. But now that we've evaluated this, now we just need to understand, it, are, we dealing with a trans, are we dealing with a transverse axis that's horizontal or vertical? And again, that all comes down to, where is my a squared under? In this case, my a squared is under my x, so I'm going to have a horizontal transverse axis. And again, remember, that's important, because if you have a horizontal transverse axis, that's where the vertices and the foci lie on. Now, some people forget about this. So what I would recommend doing is when you guys sketch your ellipse, which is at 2, negative 1, sometimes, or for me, it's helpful just to draw a nice little dotted line to remember that's my transverse axis. It's horizontal. That means when I sketch my vertices and foci, they have to make sure they're on this axis. right? They're not going to go up or down, like last example. They're all going left or right. So this one's rather simple. We have a and b. So a is going to be the distance from your center to your vertices. So I'm just going to go to the right, 3, and to the left, 3. Vertice and vertice. Now, if I'm writing my vertices, this is why I was showing that plus or minus. Remember, we're shifting it left or right. So I'm technically adding and subtracting 3 from the h coordinate, right? So it's basically 2 plus or minus 3 comma negative 1, right? You're going plus 3 and left 3. So that's why you're adding and subtracting 3 from the 2. Now, obviously, you don't need to write that out. You could do the math in your head, but I just wanted to show my work. So you guys could see where I got those points. And obviously, if you have easy problems, like you could also just look at the graph and just say, oh, it's at negative 1, negative 1, right? And you could just count. Yes? That's just me reminding myself that's the transverse axis. So I'm just like drawing it in there, you know? Um, let's go and find the foci, since the foci go along the same axis. So the foci is going to be the square root of 10. And again, let's just use less estimation. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. So square root of 10 is between 3 and 4, right? So we're doing 1, 2, 3. Foci is really, really close to it. Oops. All right. No, no. So foci, I haven't done anything yet. Well, yeah, I did. Foci is the distance of c from your center to your foci is c. That is true for an ellipse, which we've already done, and that's true for a hyperbola. So again, your foci have to lie on your transverse axis, right? 
Right, well, because what's the square root of 10? It's three point, like, it's really small. It's really close to three, right? Um, so now, again, we're going left and right. So just like I did two plus or minus three, I'm now going to be doing 2 plus or minus square root of 10 because we're going left and right. So in this example, we're going to have 2 plus or minus the square root of 10 comma negative 1. Now, you could write that, hold on, you could write that as two different points like I did over here. But usually when you're dealing with radicals rather than talking to your neighbor, you can just leave it as the plus or minus. Yes? Question? So guys. Here's 2. You're at 2 over. If you go over 3, you're now at 5. So 2 plus 3 is 5. If you're at 2 and you go left 3, you're going to minus 3, which is at negative 1. The k court, the k court, it doesn't change. You're not going up. When you move left or right, you're not going up or down. Like It has to lie on this axis. So the only thing that changes is your h coordinate. Now, let's go and find the covertices. I thought you wanted me to slow down. You're not writing down the stuff. Oh, OK. So the covertices are not on the transverse axis. They're on the conjugate axis, meaning now they're on this axis up here. right? They're perpendicular to the transverse axis. So they're going up and down. Well, how far are they going up and down? One. So you could easily just go from the center. You can go up one, covertice, and down one, covertice. Right? So these are both at the value of 2, and then you're at 2, 0. And at what is negative 1 minus 2, so that's going to be 2, negative 2. Last but not least is the asymptote. The equation for an asymptote with a horizontal transverse axis is y equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h. So let's plug that in there. So y equals plus or minus b over a, so that's 1 third, times x minus h, so that's going to be minus 2, and then plus k. So k in this case is going to be a negative 1, so that would be minus 1. Now, is this easy to graph? Well, I mean, you'd have to distribute the 1 third, and then you'd have to combine negative 2 thirds minus 1. You can do it, but your y-intercept is going to be a uh, fraction. It's probably not preferred to try to write this in slope intercept and graph it. Okay? You can do it, but it's probably not preferred. Yes? So if A over B equals A over B equal to C. No. Wait. Where are you getting A over B equal to C? Because the square root of 10 is there, like close to one third. I mean, no, I'm dumb. Okay, just keep going. Okay. Any other questions? The first step. So what my point was, or what I wanted to bring up with you guys is rather than trying to graph this, which you can do, but you're going to have two different y-intercepts. It's just really not really worth your time. So the trick that I said was you could take your covertices and draw horizontal lines through your covertices. This is cheap, but I like it. Then you can take your vertices and draw horizontal lines. And what you see is we kind of create this box. Okay. The corners, through the corners, the center, and the box is where your asymptotes are going to be. All right? So that's like an easy way to create the asymptotes. Yes? So for the covertices, how did you get, like, how did you get that? Well, notice the covertices go up and down from the center when you have a vertical horizontal transverse axis. So you're at two. The center's at 2, and you're going up 1, and you're going down 1. So you're at 2, negative 1. If you're at 2, negative 1, and you go up 1, you're at 2, 0. And if you're at 2, negative 1, and you go down, you're at 2, negative 2. Yes? What did you change the box? I didn't create the, I just did vertical lines and horizontal lines. So I'm just kind of estimating where those points are. I don't really know where those points so technically are. Either. What is that one in the center? So, so, like, so the asymptote always intersects with the center? Yeah. And then I can just draw my parabolas through my vertex, approaching my asymptotes, opening it up towards your focus. I mean, it worked, but did you really want to do it on the test? Depends on what the question is on the test. 